Good morning. We welcome you on this All Saints Sunday to Wesley Chapel United Methodist Church. It's good to have you with us this morning. We're so thankful that you are part of our worship this morning. On this All Saints Sunday, uh, we want to celebrate the lives of so many that have meant so much to us and have um, gone before us and are the great cloud of witnesses that uh, are before us uh, today and every day of our lives. And we, we celebrate their lives because they have uh, brought us into the church and into the knowledge of the good news of Jesus Christ. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 107, Selected Verses. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, who is good, whose steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom the Lord has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in the desert waste, finding no way to a city in which to dwell. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, who delivered them from their distress and led them by a straight way till they reached a city in which to dwell. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. For the Lord satisfies those who are thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. The Lord turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste because of the wickedness of its inhabitants. The Lord turns a desert into pools of water a parched land into springs of water. The Lord lets the hungry dwell there, and they establish a city in which to live. They sow fields and plant vineyards and get a fruitful yield. They multiply greatly by the blessing of the Lord, who does not let their cattle decrease. When they are diminished and brought low, through oppression, trouble, and sorrow, the Lord pours contempt upon princes and makes them wander in trackless wastes. But the Lord raises up the needy out of affliction and makes their families like flocks. The upright see it and are glad, and all wickedness stops its mouth. Whoever is wise, give heed to those things. Consider the steadfast love of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect, one in communion and fellowship, in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your holy saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys which you have prepared for those who sincerely love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> At this time, we give thanks to those who have uh, gone on to be with the Lord during this past year from Wesley Chapel United Methodist Church, uh, faithful members and family members of the church, and we give thanks for their lives today. And I would like to call their names Joe Farabee, Rachel Louise Caudle, Alice Plyler, Les Snake Roberts, Tom May Jr. And Betty Burridge, we give thanks to God for the lives of these, the faithful, as they have gone from our midst to be with the Lord. God bless them all, and God bless Wesley Chapel United Methodist Church.
Our scripture lesson today comes from Luke chapter 6, verses 20 through 31. Very familiar, very familiar uh, words from Jesus. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, and revile you, and defame you. And on account of the Son of Man, rejoice in that day, and leap for joy. For surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will moan, mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Since the earliest days of Christianity, the faithful have gathered to give thanks for the life and ministry of the saints, women and men whose witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ has been a, a blessing generation after generation in every single generation that has lived. The witness of many of these uh, blessed women and men, such as uh, St. Francis of Assisi, uh, St. Teresa of Avila, uh, St. Augustine of Hippo, are well known. Many of their writings have become popular. Their deeds inspire us to name hospitals and schools and churches for them. And their service to the churches uh, talk to the faithful in every generation. Yet for others, such as um, St. Simon or St. Jude, little is known beyond their names, even though we have used their names to uh, name certain places. But regardless of how much or how little we know about these faithful witnesses, one thing is certain. Their life and their ministry has richly blessed the church. And as we gather to celebrate the Feast of the Saints, or All Saints Sunday, we are called to give thanks to God for the blessings that saints have bestowed upon the church and upon the world, as well as the many blessings God has bestowed upon each of us. Of course, by worldly standards, it would appear that the saints didn't know very much about blessings. Most of them didn't know the first thing about wealth. Many lived all or part of their lives in poverty. Status and power that comes with it was a foreign concept to them. As many of the saints never knew high-paying jobs or re revered responsibilities, they chose instead to work for little or no money, to serve the poor, to serve the helpless, to serve the lonely, the sick, the imprisoned. And far from inspiring fear or subordination, many of the saints were hated, 
Many of them met untimely death as martyrs precisely because of the faith that they so boldly proclaimed. By worldly standards, their lives were not what we would say comfortable or perfect, but their lives give us a pattern to strive toward as we strive toward perfection in this world. You see, the saints didn't live by worldly standards. They lived by Jesus' standards. And as the Gospel of Luke tells us, Jesus' standard for what constituted a blessing is radically different from the standards that the rest of the world is accustomed to. Blessed are you who are poor, Jesus says, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh later. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, when they revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day. Leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. Poverty, hunger, Mourning, hatred, exclusion, revilement, and defamation. Do these things seem like blessings to you? But Jesus is convinced that they are. And most shocking of all, Jesus says that these are the sorts of people to whom the kingdom of God is entrusted. Now, there are people that will raise their hands in objection and say, we can't possibly entrust the kingdom of God to a bunch of poor folks. They don't know the first thing about business or what it takes to run a kingdom. Others may say the kingdom of God is just a fancy term tossed around by theologians. It is impossible on earth. There's just too much violence, too much oppression, too much chaos. But worst of all, some will hear the words of Jesus and say, See there? See there? Jesus will take care of the poor and the hungry and the sorrowful and the hated. He will take care of them in heaven. Who am I to get in the way of God's will? Yet with the most clarity, the most piercing clarity, Jesus looks the opponents of the kingdom of God in the eye and pronounces a stern warning. Woe to you who are rich. You have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you. For that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. In other words, woe to you who don't know what poverty looks like or what hunger feels like. Woe to you who have never known an occasion for mourning. And woe to you who manage to tell everyone what they want to hear instead of the truth they so desperately need to hear. And so we gather here on this All Saints Sunday with words of blessing and words of woe ringing in our ears amidst the beautiful uh, world, the beautiful words that we speak, the festive liturgies that we will celebrate this afternoon, the words of woe ringing in our ears. Here today we celebrate. But let us not lose sight of the fact that today, on this All Saints Sunday, there's more here than we are seeing. God is calling us to action. God is calling us to action. God is calling us to 
bear witness to the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God witnessed by Jesus in Luke's gospel is it's not some abstract theological term about a time and a place the world has never known. In fact, the kingdom of God can be a place that all of us can come to know. The kingdom of God breaks through when we love our enemies. It takes hold when we do good to those who hate us. It comes alive when we bless those who curse us. It shines brightly when we pray for those who abuse or mistreat us. It shows up when we honor the request of beggars. When we live our lives by the principle of do unto others as you would have them do unto you, or as our translation says, do to others as you would have them do to you, we become citizens of the kingdom. Of course, the work of building the kingdom, it's not easy work. It's not easy work at all. But then again, as Jesus reminds us here in Luke's gospel, life with God isn't easy. Life with God is not easy in any way. Life with God means that we will know what it is to be poor. We will know what it is to be hungry. We will know what it is to be sorrowful and mourn. And we will know what it is to be cursed. Life with God means that we will know what it is to be unpopular, to be discounted, to be overlooked. And life with God means that we will know what it is to be hated. But the good news is that the kingdom of God is built brick by brick, stone by stone, by people such as these. People who know what poverty is. People who know what hunger is. People who know what sorrow and mourning is. People who know what being cursed looks like. People who know what it feels like to be overlooked and discounted. People who know what being hated feels like. So today on this All Saints Sunday, let's, let's look at ourselves and let's begin to live by a different set of standards. Instead of worldly standards, let us begin to live by standards of the kingdom. It begins today. It starts right today. It starts by loving our enemies. It starts by showing kindness to people who don't deserve it. It grows into the ability to bless those who curse us, to pray for those who mistreat us, and to take advantage of those around them. It manifests itself in the ability to listen, to show honor to those who are forced to beg. It is lived out, not in the comfort of our homes, or our churches, or our offices, but among the poor, among the hungry, among the sorrowful, among the hated. Because after all, the kingdom of God belongs to them. And when we do that, when we exchange our worldly standards for kingdom standards, That's when it all comes together. The blessed communion of the saints, the great cloud of witnesses, cries out, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. Now as we go forth into the week, O oh Lord, 
help us to remember to humble ourselves. That it begins today. It starts today. Help us to love our enemies. Help us to show kindness to people who don't deserve it. Help us to grow into the ability to bless those who curse us. To pray for those who mistreat us and take advantage of us. And help us, O oh Lord, to live into the kingdom of God with all the saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.